Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. During World War II, Battleship Fire Control perhaps reached its apex, and you see many battleships scoring effective hits from their very first rounds fired. So the question that then is raised is, what is the easiest way to score a hit on an enemy battleship? And the answer uh, is incredibly surprising to me. As someone who's studied this for a long time, I actually went back and reread an article that I've read years ago, but completely missed this one line. It's by Commander Stratford Morse, who used to work up at Battleship Cove, and he wrote a number of articles for Warship International. One of them is uh, about whether a Yamato or an Iowa-class battleship would win in a straight-up fight. And in it, he talks briefly about fire control, which includes a little bit of a discussion that uh, he had with Chief Skelly, who was the chief fire controlman uh, for the guns on Iowa in the 1980s, at the time when this article was released. If you have an account with JSTOR, you can look up uh, the scan of this article online. Uh, otherwise, I'll summarize the part that's uh, relevant to this. Between Commander Morse's personal experience and his discussions with Chief Skelly, uh, he writes down that the easiest way to score hits on a battleship-sized target is because of the dispersion of the guns. So what is dispersion? Uh, dispersion is, as the shells leave the barrel, uh, notice you've got multi-barrel turrets, so as the shells are leaving the barrel, you're going to have the force of the shells on each side acting on each shell as they come out, so it will cause the shells to diverge. The U.S. Navy uh, partially solves this, and many other navies came to the same conclusion, uh, by having a microsecond offset between when the barrels of each turret go off. On Iowa-class battleships, the center barrel fires first, then the left, then the right. And there's just a slight interrupter built into the system uh, so that when you pull the triggers, it delays when that signal gets to the breech of each gun. Now, that kind of dispersion would typically throw the shells side to side. However, minor variances in the barrels are still going to cause some dispersion in the up and down axis. Dispersion isn't entirely a bad thing. You don't want all of your shells to land in the exact same spot because your fire control solution is almost never going to be perfect. Uh, if all your shells are perfectly coordinated to land in the, the same exact spot, uh, that's probably physically impossible to do. Um, but it means that if you are off by the smallest measurement of the 19 variables that you're plugging into your fire control system here on New Jersey, then all of your shells are off. Whereas if you have an amount of dispersion, it's almost like a shotgun blast uh, hitting. There is a pattern that is landing around a target, and then you're likely to get some hits on that target. So uh, I always thought that the easiest way for two ships to shoot each other is like going all the way back to Age of Sail. You're just sailing next to each other broadside to broadside, and that keeps your speeds relatively constant. You're firing at the big slab side of the target. But because American ships have corrected their dispersion so much, uh, there's only about a hundred yard variance side to side in dispersion, but there's almost 400 yards variance going from near your ship to away from your ship. So it's something like four times the dispersion in that y-axis as there is in the x-axis. Which means that if you have a ship coming directly towards you or directly away from you, and your fire control solution is on point, then you are most likely to score first salvo hits on your target. The ship coming directly at you is going to have way more of a chance of the being bracketed this way with the shorter dispersion that way. Now, this is somewhat intentional because when you're sailing parallel to an enemy ship, you uh, want to bracket your target to find the right range. So you want there to be some of this, and, and you're not even looking for hits on these early shots, you're just looking to bracket it because that means you're on the right range, and then you can start firing for effect 
Uh, oftentimes, battleships would fire ranging salvos with only half of their battery. Uh, notoriously, when Iowa and New Jersey are chasing the Japanese destroyer Nawaki in February of 44, they're firing only from their forward batteries and they're firing half salvos, so three rounds each most of the time. There's a couple of one or two round salvos where uh, guns aren't loaded in time or there's mechanical casualties in the loading process. Uh, likewise, Bismarck and Hood engaging each other. Uh, Bismarck's typically firing the two forward turrets and then the two aft turrets and so on and so forth uh, to get these half salvos in until they bracket the target. Then you switch to full salvos and fire as quickly as possible. However, you'll notice when Hood and Bismarck are sailing it's kind of a converging course, but more or less broadside onto each other. It takes several salvos for Prince of Wales to start hitting Bismarck, for Bismarck to hit Hood. However, there are several recorded first gun salvos uh, that score hits during World War II. Uh, for example, Duke of York chasing Scharnhorst scores a hit on her very first shot. Yamato firing at Johnston, even though she's a destroyer-sized target, Johnston's sailing directly towards Yamato. Yamato scores multiple hits on her first salvo at Johnston. Likewise, at Suragawa Strait, all five of the American battleships that fire score hits on their first salvos on Fuso, Yamashiro, and Mugami, uh, depending on which one was being targeted by each salvo. And in those instances, the Japanese ships were either coming towards the American line or Mogami had reversed course and was heading away from them. So we know that crossing the T is devastating because your enemy can only fire half of their shells at you, but you can fire your full broadside. But it turns out, even though you've got this narrower uh, target aspect that you're pointing at, you can get far, far more accuracy because of the natural dispersion of these shells on the y-axis. And I feel like this is, wasn't even that well known during the age of battleships. Battleship commanders are still trying to maneuver broadside on. Um, and it's not until much more recent scholarship, like the articles and books written by Robert Lundgren, that have um, proposed the theory, proved in my mind, but read them for yourselves and, and see if you agree with him, uh, that American battleships and Yamato uh, were getting first hit salvos, uh, first salvo hits at Leyte Gulf and Suragawa Strait. Older histories like uh, Samuel Morrison does not credit that, but their picture of the battle space is also a little bit off. So what do you think? We've probably all played uh, naval combat simulation games on the computer video games. Uh, they don't really simulate the dispersion being four times as long as it is wide. Uh, do you think it's easier to hit a ship broadside on or head or stern on? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.